say that there's a, you know, part of what I'm working on is how the idea of extremism is negotiated around religion and how can we be really religious without being extremist? Is that possible? Catholicism seems to be the safe space to do that often on TV. But one way that religion is dealt with in film and television and popular culture is through, if you make a black woman religious, that is somehow seen as safe and normal and it just can't be extremist because for a black woman to be religious is sort of cultural. You know, it's not political and that there's a sort of cultural linking there, and I, you know, that's certainly in play in The Matrix, which is a good example. Um, but you know, there's the black priestess in Battlestar Galactica, who I think is a, you know, this pivotal figure for getting Laura thinking, do I believe in anything? You know? and, the, and the woman says, well, you're not dying, but you know, here's what the scriptures say. Um, so I think she's an important figure in Laura's quest. Um, and then when the Geminian fundamentals come in, we see another black woman. Um, who is very, you know, she's an extremist, she's a fundamentalist, and that's kind of unusual to see a black character represented that way on, uh, on television or in popular culture at all. She's the one who comes to Laura and says, punish this girl for having abortion, and Laura, you know, completely tells her off. So just to start it off. Let me, let me say something, and I will look right at the camera when I say it. It's okay when white women have babies, but when anybody else has babies, it's a bad thing. Okay? So let me, let me talk about this, because you know, you got to remember that Michelle Obama got called a baby mama on Fox, okay? And that was, that was all the bad thing. And now when Bristol Palin is called, you know, you know, this is Bristol Palin's baby daddy, of course. He's beautiful, he's hunky. I mean, like, what was wrong with that girl that she did not have a con against the birth control pills when she saw the boy? I mean, like, you know, really. I mean, but that's just a sidebar. But the issue becomes, you know, what happens when women of color have sex? Havoc is wreaked upon the world. And we can't do it on TV because God made the black woman have a sex, she's Jezebel. And so we need to desexualize her and make her a church woman, okay? So you're never going to see, if the Savior Grace was like, you know, Vivica Fox, you know, instead of her, you know, that show would have never last a whole season. Okay, but because it's, you know, who it is, it's okay. So whenever you have women of color having sexuality or complexity or religion and everything else, it's a violation. Okay, but it's okay if somebody white can have that because we can ascribe other things to them that will make them be okay. And see, this is the whole thing that's happening with the Bristol Palin narrative, is that she's being ascribed with, oh, look, it's just all wonderful. Forget about the talk that, you know, any place else that would have been sin. Okay, and Christian narrative. How do you change this narrative from it being sin and hiding that girl out to putting her on the front thing of the Republican National Convention with her baby daddy? And they ain't married yet. I mean, I, I just call crap on these people. I'm sorry, I had to get that on, on the crate. But I mean, this is what we're faced with in these TV narratives, too. So that, you know, other people don't get to act out. You know, but it's okay when you, the whiteness ascribes you to be able to act out. I, I would just add add to that to say that um, in the sense in, in the in the kind of the sense of the cultural economy and how these things become certain kinds of commodities or, or, or the representations are commodified that you know race is, is a perfect example of of um, how it is that religion can be a framework for certain kinds of transgressions but not others. And so the transgression that you're talking about is not marketable as a commodity because it's too yeah. threatening, it's too, and so, so that transgression can't take place. Whereas the post-feminist, kick-ass, white woman having sex, tied up, everything else, that can be marketed at this particular historical moment as a commodity. So it's not the case that any transgression will do, right? There's only, you know, certain ones, certain ones can take place and, and as they're taking place, they, they, they actually eclipse others and prevent others from taking place. Yeah, thank you. I wonder, Jamie Lynn's pregnancy wasn't a So this is just like, look, this family's a crack, you know. But that, that's the shot of fruit of, you know. I mean, I mean the, the staying on Jane's thing about race, I mean, I, I think the commodity and market are not just bad thoughts. I mean, these are sort of real, tangible things. Um, 
a TV show is a commodity that has to be financed, it has to be marketed. And whatever the transgressive intents of the makers, however much they want to revel in ambiguity, there are certain constraints. So for instance, um, Rob Tapper, who produced Xena, before he did Xena, he wanted to do a television series which had a black female actor as a superhero. The studios would finance it. I mean, well, it literally was not marketable. And um, one of the actors who played in uh, Xena, black a, a female actor, also played in, in, in one of the, the other shows produced by the same people, and in Josh Whedon's um, Firefly. And it's, you know, it, uh, you know, having a black female actor in the sort of lead, sort of a kick butt role, you know, it, it literally is not marketable um, by the studios. Now, you know, I think there's some real issues about how the studios also censor and control, and about how they define what is marketable. But nonetheless, you know, these are very real financial business corporate practices that determine what we see on television. sort of uh, thought through different uh, issues of Catholicism on my program, so I think that prejudices me to see it that way, but I don't, you know, obviously the show itself has to be read apart from the intentions of the producer, and that's important. Um, and I'm, I have not watched West Wing much at all. I think the, the broad picture of what I've seen on television, though, is, a, is an anxiety about showing uh, liberal religion that liberals tend to be the secular thinkers on the show, and that if you are, you can be a little religious, but if you are deeply religious, that more often is linked with a kind of extremism, conservatism. And where you know issues of gender and reproductive rights and sexuality come up, there's, there's always this kind of stark, because I believe in God, you cannot get an abortion. Because I don't believe in God, I can't get an abortion. And, and that's just how the narrative seems to be repeatedly framed, um, except, and this, this was, uh, this is in the bigger work, and I didn't get to talk about it. The bigger picture of abortion on television, reproductive rights, reproductive rights on television, is that religion is not an issue at all for thinking through um, abortion on TV until the 80s, and until it becomes religious-sized, I don't, I don't have the right word there, um, by the Christian right and by Jerry Falwell and so on. So that around Maud, you know, all the letters that they received, they're just, they're just like, this is in poor taste. You know, I'm a Catholic and I have strong feelings about this, but I just don't like you talking about this on a sitcom. And, you know, the words pro-choice and pro-life don't really exist in the vocabulary then. And another case study I talk about in the longer version of the essay is Sesame Street, where there were ridiculous rumors floating around that the show was going to address the issue of abortion. And, um, and <laughs> what happened was that someone gave a speech about how uh, at, a, at a big conference about how the show was going to try to picture small families instead of larger families to promote a sort of idea about population control um, to, to child viewers. You know?